Hello and welcome to our next Security Middle East Magazine webinar. I'm joined today by Nicholas Garcia, who is the Vice President of the Middle East at IDEMIA. Um, and today we're going to be walking through uh, biometric authentication and some of the key trends across the Middle Eastern region. So Nicholas, welcome to, uh, to the webinar today. Um, we've got about 15 to 20 minutes of, of time to, to sort of explore this really hot topic, um, especially across the Middle East. So without kind of further ado, I'd, I'd like to jump into the first question. Um, so Nicholas, um, what are the, the current access control trends that you're seeing in particular across the Middle East and in biometrics technology in particular? And do you think COVID has had a, an impact on, on any requirements or are they the same as before? Yeah, sure. So uh, for sure, COVID has uh, had a, a, an impact on the, you know, the, the current situation in terms of access control, uh, more specifically in terms of biometrics. So before COVID, uh, contact biometrics was the, the king. So basically, you were using your finger to, uh, to open the door. Today, uh, we see a, a, a big demand for contactless biometrics. So when I speak about contactless, uh, I'm speaking about fingerprint contactless biometrics, where you just wave your hand, you don't touch anything, as well as facial recognition, where obviously you present your face in front of the reader and uh, the, the reader will open. So that's, um, we, we saw a trend starting before the pandemic, but the pandemic has definitely accelerated this trend in contactless requirements. Yeah, most definitely. I think we've seen a, a real convergence between safety and security. And biometric authentication can really kind of touch both of those points there. Um, what what do you believe the foreseeable future um, holds then for access control solutions? Yeah, so this trend is going to to continue uh, for sure. Even if COVID were to disappear tomorrow, I think everybody is now in the trend of going contactless. But not only. Uh, obviously, before the contactless, we were using biometrics with uh, an existing access control. Uh, systems. Now, today or tomorrow, the, the market will require more added value for what you put in place. So for instance, uh, one big, big thing is compliance. We've seen with COVID that uh, a lot of countries around have asked for temperature control, for instance, um, those type of things. So basically what I see for future is more integration than, uh, than it was in the past, more value for the investment because it is an investment. And uh, in terms of the compliance, it would, on one hand, the biometric will identify the individual, but on the other hand, the system will check that uh, certain criteria are met before the person, the individual can enter in, in uh, certain areas. So the temperature, uh, the, the vaccine, for instance, the, the, all those type of things will be integrated, are already integrated today uh, in the, the same system, more value for uh, the investment. Yeah, most definitely. So it, it, are you suggesting then that the, the rate of adoption and acceptance really of, of biometrics is, is going to kind of stay on this trajectory across the Middle East in terms of accepting the use, usage of it? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in the world region, so as you mentioned, I'm in charge of Middle East Africa. So we've seen different rates of adoption in the different region. Uh, Africa has been for a very long time, a very, very fan of biometrics for security reasons, which for instance, you don't have in the UAE. So coming from, from that point of view, uh, the adoption is really on the compliance and um, uh, on the, the ease of use and the, the speed of the system as well. Yeah, most definitely. Um, are you seeing any kind of cultural differences in, in terms of acceptance and usability? So different types of body parts that are more acceptable or applicable in the Middle Eastern market? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I always say that there is no golden, uh, silver bullet, sorry, uh, in the, the sense that uh, what you will use in South Africa, for instance, is not what you will use in the middle of Africa. And it's definitely not what you will use in uh, different countries in the Middle East. Some examples, uh, in some countries in Africa, people believe that if you take a picture of them, you are basically stealing their, uh, their soul, their spirit. So uh, you can't use the, uh, the facial recognition there, for instance, but they are much more at ease with the use of fingerprints and therefore you can use it there. 
in the Middle East, in the other hand, uh, it could be it could be something like uh, religion, religi religious sorry, behaviors. So, for instance, when uh, ladies has to wear, you know, the uh, the abaya and the whole, uh, um, basically clothes hiding their face, you can't use facial recognition for them uh, for obvious reason. So you will use something different. So yes, every market, every country, or every region has got their own uh, requirement. And that's why it's important to have a wide uh, range of choice so that you can make sure that uh, you don't leave anybody on the side of the road. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've, I've got to touch on this point um, and it's around cybersecurity. And we know that it's clearly a critical component of data protection and privacy. How does your organization ensure that, that these solutions that you have across all of these biometric modalities are secure as possible? Yeah, so cybersecurity or security in general for IT system has been on the forefront of what we've been doing uh, since the beginning. So yeah. in the past, what we, we had to do was to make sure that the biometric data that we are collecting and the templates that we are generating were kept uh, safe in the sense that you could not reproduce them. So we're still doing that today, but today the, the demand for security is increasing. Uh, cyber security is a big problem. Uh, for, for everybody. So we have to make sure that the communication between the reader, uh, the access control system, uh, the, the computers is, uh, is safe. And to do that, we're putting uh, some measures in place, like for instance, uh, uh, SSL securization sorry, of, uh, or encryption of the, the transmission between the different components of the system. And what we are doing now as well is, we are leveraging on the, the cybersecurity industry, which are releasing some standard uh, where you, know, you need to, um, to, to make sure that your system is secured, that you want to comply with, not only to comply with, but to get certified with. Uh, one example on our latest product, the Vision Pass, which is our facial recognition uh, solution. Uh, we've obtained the two iBeta certifications, so iBeta 1 and iBeta 2. And uh, it's the first in the world for those type of readers. Uh, iBeta 2 is the highest level of security from a cybersecurity point of view uh, in terms of uh, intrusion, uh, spoofing, and so on and so on. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that IDEMIA has managed to reach this certification with uh, uh, the, the Vision Pass. Excellent. And then just, just to kind of expand on that. I've, I've personally been out traveling now more, um, so having to use sort of biometric passports, and they never seem to work for me at the airports. So um, how accurate are your solutions, um, the, yeah, the, the different biometric solutions that you do have? Sure. So our solutions are very accurate. So one of the things that, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've been doing biometrics for over 40 years. So through the, the years, we've been able to assist big organizations such as the FBI, uh, French police, South African police in the uh, UAE as well. We've been working with the, the government. And because we, of all this experience that we've had over the past uh, 40 years plus, uh, we are able to fine tune our algorithm. And we are very regularly uh, ranked number one with the NIST organization in, uh, in the US in terms of accuracy, in terms of speed, in terms of uh, reliability of our algorithm. So we make sure that when we release something, we release the best uh, of, the, of the best. And uh, to give you an idea, for instance, in our products like uh, MorphoWave Compact or the Vision Pass, uh, we can go up to 100,000 individual. So uh, for the Vision Pass, 40,000 for the, uh, sorry, for the MorphoWave Compact, 40,000 for the Vision Pass in less than one second. And irrespective of how many people you've got uh, in, uh, enrolled in the database, uh, it's, it's a non-linear performance, which means that you have one person in the uh, database or you've got 100,000 person in the database, the result will be exactly the same. So yes, we are very accurate uh, and very fast as well. Excellent. And then for any organizations watching this, this, uh, this fireside chat, what does an implementation look like for one of these biometric services end to end? If they wanted to embark on this journey, how long would it take to, to get this started up? 
Well, it's, it's a very good question. And it's, uh, you know, the answer is always uh, how long is the string? Uh, let me elaborate on that. So obviously you've got different size, uh, different type of system. I think what's very important is from day one to really identify what is uh, strategic, what is very important for the, the customer. Uh, make sure that the system you are designing can cater for your needs uh, and make sure that your system is actually, uh, that you can evolve your system because you, you don't want to start investing in something and then three months down the line, you realize now I'm missing this, but I can't change my system. So. Uh, you, it could be anything between you know a couple of months to uh, six months to a year, it depends on the complexity of your uh, your system. Uh, but the the best way to know is basically to speak with a, a professional like us, for instance, where we can evaluate what are the needs of the customer. Again, I I don't believe in uh, the the silver bullet that one fits all. I believe that everything should be. Uh, custom made, you know, for the, the requirement of the, uh, the user. Yeah, perfect. Um, just to kind of settle some, some of the audience's maybe concerns around facial recognition technologies, we've seen in the media in particular that um, some facial recognition companies are quite biased to towards uh, certain categories of the populations or, or ethnic groups. How does your organization address that particular challenge? Yeah, because that's a very good question. So, um, look, I don't think uh, companies in general are biased, uh, you know, towards certain individuals. However, what is true is that for your system to uh, to to recognize a wide category of people, should they be from Asia, Africa, Caucasian, or whatever the you know the the origin, uh, you need to make sure that your system is trained with a large data uh, of uh, population. So, you know, we are using uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And the, the very concept of these technologies is that you first train your algorithm based on uh, data that you've got. And then uh, later on, you do some tests to make sure it's working. And then obviously uh, from there, the machine is going to, uh, to, to continue uh, with what they learned, okay? It's like uh, if you've got a kid who's, who's four years old and you show him, uh one cat you know who's a, a red cat for instance well if the kid only see uh, the one cat uh if uh, tomorrow or next week he, he find another cat but the cat is uh, is uh, pink then it's going to be difficult for him to understand that it's also a cat it's just an example obviously it's a bit more complicated than that machine learning is the same so where our strength is is the fact that uh, as i said we've been working with uh, big organization for the past 40 years plus. So we do have exposure to every single region in the world with a lot of data uh, through those organizations for the different categories. So when we train our algorithm, we make sure that the algorithms got uh, enough data on every single origin to identify without uh, showing any sign of uh, bias. So, that's basically the, the concept. Uh, it's working in many, many sites in the world. We never had any complaint uh, about those type of things, but it is a reality. And uh, as I always said, the, the proof is in the pudding. So I invite uh, you know, your listener to visit us at Intersect Dubai, where we will have a stand. We will have the, the different readers we spoke about during this fire, uh, side chat. And uh, yeah, if they want to test it, uh, see it for themselves, they are welcome to come and we'll. Uh, We'll make sure that we give them all the information and the demonstration they need. Excellent. Um, well, yeah, that that pretty much wraps up the the uh, the conversation today. So thank you, Nicholas, for for the presentation. I thank personally you. have been following your organisation's growth for a couple of years now, and there are an impressive array of, um, of options from facial recognition to finger and iris, and it's it's here now, and I believe it's here to stay. So. Um, if you have any closing comments at all, Nicholas, about the, the trends or, or how um, the kind of organizations can, can contact you, please, please let them know now. Yep. So uh, the, the, the comments that I've got is that uh, obviously we're coming a long way with biometrics. We still uh, have a lot of things you know, to explore in future, uh, a lot of uh, different ways to address customers uh, and, and users' uh, requirements. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. I said it earlier. 
it's, it's better to come and see us, test it, make sure you've got all the answers to all the questions uh, to avoid any uh, disappointment. And in terms of contacting us, well, uh, we can share the, uh, the email address and telephone number uh, later on. Maybe you can put it in the notes of uh, the, the video. And uh, yeah, anybody is welcome to con contact us and we will uh, help them as much uh, uh, as we can. Absolutely. Well, um, thanks again, uh, Nicholas, for your time today. Thank you to everyone for, for listening to this fireside chat. Please do explore Idemia's uh, website. They've got some fantastic content on there. And of course, please uh, try and attend any of the events um, that, that they are either presenting at or, uh, or showcasing their products. So um, thank you once again for your time today. Thank you to everyone for listening. And uh, please do keep an eye out for any future webinars um, coming up over the next weeks and months. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.